So we can hear you. Good evening, West High Baptist Church. Good evening. Hi. Without further ado, time for the pledges. Okay. I hand over your heart. All right. <clears throat> All right. Lee. Lee. Anyway, so on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, time for the national anthem. Okay. Someone record me. You're being recorded right now. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang the bombs bursting. little message I have for y'all unity through fellowship because I think there's nothing more important in a church than fellowship we are here to bring each other together and lift each other up a threefold cord is not easily broken Amen. so I took my text out of 1st Peter 3 8 1st Peter chapter 3 verse 8 it's right here so we can all share I'm sharing today David 1st Peter chapter 3 verse 8 Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of, one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, and be courteous. I chose this topic in the season of Thanksgiving because on Thursday we are going to have our church family Thanksgiving. And I think there's nothing more delightful than the people of, of the church coming together and sharing a meal together. And we do it often, but there's something about Thanksgiving that's just a little, yes. little special. Amen. So I said Christian community and the characteristics that believers are called to embody. So the call to unity and community. He said, finally, all of you, this opening phrase indicates that Peter is addressing the entire Christian community. He is instructing all of us to be unified, and rem reminding believers that these qualities are essential for everyone, not just a select few. So the characteristics of Christian conduct. The verse lists a couple of key attributes that define how Christians should relate to one another. Be like-minded, for starters. This encourages unity and in thought and purpose among believers. We are to be together, amen? amen? It doesn't mean that everyone must agree on every single issue, because we know we won't, but rather everyone should have a shared commitment to Christ and His teachings. This unity fosters a supportive environment where believers can grow together in faith. Unity through fellowship together. Be, be sympathetic. Have compassion for one another. This quality emphasizes empathy and understanding. 
which I noted is in short supply and is hard to find these days. Believers are encouraged to be sensitive to each other's feelings, joys, and struggles. Sympathy strengthens relationships, amen, and helps create a caring and loving community where individuals feel valued and understood. So I said, where compassion abounds, love follows. So love one another. Love is foundational to the Christian faith. This command reflects the central teaching of Jesus. It is the very foundation we stand on, is to love one another. Love as you have been loved. Amen. With an agape love, which is a selfless love that seeks the best for others, which is critical for maintaining unity and harmony within a community. Be compassionate. Compassion involves not just feeling for others, but also acting to alleviate their suffering. This trait encourages believers to respond to the needs of others with kindness and mercy. Reflecting the love of Christ in our practical ways. Because we are a community, and we are a church family, amen? We are willing to help each other out during our most dire circumstances. I know that in this church, I have received help in many forms. I'll just say that. I have received help in one form or another throughout all my years of being here. And it's always been, you know, whenever I lost my job or my hours got cut back, I reached out to Brother Doug Kuhn. Now, he made me earn it, but he gave me a job. He gave me a job to do. I could pay my bills. I know that any time I've been in any sort of situation in my life, I have received sound advice from people in this church because y'all have been there. You have been there a time before, so you can relay that advice to me. We are to help each other, have some compassion for each other. So this leads me on to my last point, humbleness. I said, stay humble or you will be humbled. Amen. We are not to act like we are above everybody else. Humility is crucial in fostering healthy relationships. I, I know myself that I don't like being around people who are too proud and who are on their high horse. You know, they're pretty uncomfortable to be around. But humility involves recognizing one's limitations and valuing others' contributions. A humble attitude prevents conflicts and promotes a spirit of cooperation within service of the church. So again, stay humbled or you will be humbled. Like we learned in the first chapter of Haggai, there is no room for selfishness in God's house. Mm -hmm. Humility is crucial for building strong and lasting bonds. So I said the overall meaning, the bottom line, is a call for believers to embody these characteristics in their interactions with one another. By doing so, they are reflecting the love and the characteristics of Christ creating a community that demonstrates the transformative power of the gospel. Have you been transformed by the gospel? Amen. So, to end my part, in the season of Thanksgiving, while we share meals together at least a couple times a month, and sometimes we share a meal once a week, I am super thankful for this time of fellowship that we have together, and we get to build the bonds of our church and our unity will flourish. We will only be stronger for it. So when we have our Messiah Baptist Thanksgiving, I am super thankful for the time we have together, to come together. Now, I, I don't have very much family left on, on my side. I don't have a lot of family left, but I am learning that you can choose your family, and this church family is very important to me. Amen. And I am thankful for each and every one of y'all in my life and that we get to spend Thanksgiving together. So at this time, this will be the last service we have where you have the opportunity to come and give a testimony of praise, or if you just want to share what God has done in your life, just express thanksgiving for what He has done for you, okay? So I'll step aside, and not everyone all at once, but whenever you're ready, you come on up, okay? Any volunteers? Volunteers? Oh, Russ is going first, and then we'll get you Ava, okay?
I just want to relate a story about something that happened to me yesterday uh, for which I'm um, very happy, very pleased, and thankful. Um, on Saturdays, I go down <clears throat> downtown Fort Worth, or actually out toward Lake Worth, um, to a place called the Cattle Barn, and I work there on the weekends uh, selling some of my sports memorabilia. <clears throat> After I left, I went over to Zeke's to get something to eat. And I was standing there ordering, and uh, the lady was figuring up how many hundred dollars I owed her. <clears throat> and uh, she was getting ready to tell me, and I asked her, I said, when are you guys going to start offering military or senior discounts? And she said, well, we have military discounts. And I went, you do? I are one. <laughs> and, and so there was a guy standing next to me, <clears throat> and um, he said, uh, you were in the military? I said, yes. And he said, what did you do? And I said, what did I do? <laughs> and he said, yeah, what, do you, what did you do? And I said, well, I, I was in the Navy. I was a radio man. Um, he said, well, my son is in the military, too. And he turned to the lady behind the counter, and he goes, I want to buy his lunch. <clears throat> and I, it was, it's not very often <laughs> that I'm speechless, as you all know. But, I mean, it took me so much by surprise. I literally, about the only thing I could do was just thank this guy. And I told him, I said, I invited him to come and eat with me, but he was busy, had his computer, and he said, no, I've got a bunch of work to do, but thank you. And so I was getting ready to walk away, and I turned around and I told him, I said, you know, I got out of the service in 1970, 54 years ago, and you're the first person in 54 years who's ever offered to buy my lunch because I was a veteran. And I thank God put that man there at that place to do that. Just talk about being thankful for something. It, it was such a neat deal. Anyway, thank you. Well, this is a kind of interesting story, to say the least. So basically, what was happening, so you know how teenagers are nowadays. So basically, I was at a sleepover, and I think this was last year, I want to say. So I was nine. So basically, what happened, so I was with my best friend. I do dance with her. Her name is Clara. And basically, what happened is there's two steps, two stairways in her um, grandparents' house. So basically, there's these front steps. So they go up like kind of a curve. And then these are, and then let's pretend this is the back of the house. And then it's just all twisted and it's black. So basically what happened I was on the black staircase, and I was walking down, and I skipped three steps, so I fell. Oh, no. And I didn't die. I'm still here, thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> okay, so basically, I think God sent Clara because she saved my life by calling her grandma, and she like, okay, so let's pretend this is her phone. So it was a FaceTime. So, no, her iPad. She had her iPad. So she took her iPad, me laying down on the floor, and I'm just constantly, well, crying. So basically, she called her grandma, and then she came to the incident, and it was kind of in an awkward area because it's just all black and dark down there. I mean, it's awkward because they're... Lights are automatic down there. There's no switch to flip it on, off, on, off. Like we do here, just wherever it is. Over there, somewhere. So, 
I think the lights were off. So that's the reason why I fell. And then Claire saved my life by calling her grandma. She's like, she calls her grandma Yaya. So basically she's like, Yaya, you need to come. It's an emergency. And then she came. And then it wasn't anything too major. It was just a scrape on my knee. And then I put a bandage on it. And then I was fine. I just had to sit for a few minutes. And then after I was done sitting, we had this great idea with sticky notes. So we took some sticky notes and then we um, made a trail up the stairs with sticky notes. We put them in the middle of the step. And then on, let's act like this was the first stair. So we would put follow us, also known as the sticky notes. And then there was one at the top stair in case you're going down the stairs. Yep. Exactly. So, I was... I was so thankful for her. And I still am to this day. And I still tell her thank you for doing it to this day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Man, what a blessing. Has anybody ever saved your life before? I know. Anyone? I mean, Jesus. Yes, that's a great answer. All right. Jesus saved my life. Anybody else got a te testimony or a word of praise? Okay, well, the microphone's here. I hope you're good at holding an ice cream cone because that's what it's like. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to say that my testimony for this church... I want to thank Miss Owens, first of all, for bringing me here. And I owe a lot of gratitude to her for that. And I just feel like I have grown so much in this church the last almost nine years now. I can't believe it's been that long. But anyway, I want to thank Brother Paul for having trusted me to handle a couple of situations here, like the pantry and the roadrunners. And I just feel like this is family. And I want to everybody to take care of everybody like we do and just keep on loving each other and having faith in God. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. Good job. Man, and doesn't she do a great job with her ministries? Yes. All right. Anybody else got a testimony, a word of praise? Well, I figured I'll give you one. I'm still holding it like an ice cream cone. I figured I'd give you all one last thing I'm thankful for in my life, and I don't say thank you enough because it's very hard for me, but I do have a job, and I've been working the same job for almost starting my ninth year. I've been at FedEx, um, even though I strongly dislike going there sometimes. <laughs> uh, it, it is a job. It does pay the bills, and it's been a steady, a steady job for me, so I am really thankful for the job I do have. I know there are so many people that go without, and we do not. Okay, thank thank you to my job. Anybody else got got a, got a, a testimony of praise or thankfulness? All right, brother Paul, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay. Well, basically, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. God bless you. Thank you, and thank you, thank you. Yes. I was just going to say that uh, you gave an absolutely wonderful testimony in your message this morning. All those things. Oh, the thank you. And clothes and all the things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you, Rush. Yeah, and I just, just, they just came like that. I just, you know, like that. As uh, Lord really takes care of us, doesn't He? I mean. Here we sit tonight with friends and uh, our family also. Oh, it's good to be here. I love, I enjoy being with you guys so very much. All right. 
Uh, well, I'll see you all Thursday, okay, most of you. And if you're going to your own family, I hope and wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, you all come. All right? Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us through the years. We thank you for what you've done for us this year. And uh, now, Father, we ask you to be with us, be with uh, uh, as we go home, give us safety, and uh, watch over us, give us a good night's rest. I know that there will be uh, folks, Lord, traveling, so I pray for your traveling mercies and grace upon them. Get them to and from, and uh, help us, Lord, wherever we go, to ever be grateful and thankful. And... Um, Watch over us. Give us a good night's rest. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, I want to say uh, we are, in the next week or so, going to be buying all of those cookie tins. And uh, if you want to help, uh, we'll take a day and hand those out. Uh, so uh, we, I want to encourage you. I'll let you know when I get them. I have to talk to Walgreens see if they'll give me a discount this year. They're a little higher this year than they were any other year. But we'll get it done, and we're going to hand them out. So, all right, God bless you. And Wanda, Wanda you did a good job today yes, on the did. deal. Thank you, thank you. All right, God bless you, and you're just...